Hello everybody, this is Stocky here and welcome to, um, this is something I was asked to do a little while ago actually, play Kerbal Space Program. Um, but I tried the old version out, which was version like uh, 0.13 point something, uh, which was what the demo was at the time, and I really didn't like it very much. So what I have since done is, um, I just saw that Hayoki, part of the Stocky team, had done a video and I saw that it had updated so I checked it out again and it has come a long way since the last time I played it. Uh, in fact the demo is now actually playable so what I thought I would do is show you quickly what the demo is about. Um, I probably will buy this because it just really interests me like Orbiter and actually I'll just turn the volume down for a second. Uh, Orbiter and all those kind of games I just think are fantastic. I really love space things. Um, that was one of the first things I did when I got here to the US. I went to NASA. Um, I played a huge amount of Orbiter 2010, um, although it's, it's kind of slow, so it's probably not the kind of thing you would do for, for a video. Um, but what I thought I would do anyway is just show you a little bit about what you can do in the demo, um, really just to do a spotlight of this, just to see if it's something that you guys like the idea of. Um, so in terms of settings, there are lots of setting options you can change, lots of things you can tweak and, and kind of mess with. And now, this is the demo. The current version of the full game is 18.4, and it actually uses a new graphics engine that's even faster than this one. This one's like the third version. It uses the fourth version, which is even better again for those of you who might have been having frame rate issues. But what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to start a new game. I'm going to call myself Demo. It'll only let you have one player at a time in the demo. And it, I don't think career mode's unlocked in the full game. Um, it's still in... Well, I guess it's still in alpha. It's got a lot more features than what the demo has. This is very locked down, but it's still pretty good. And if you like it, you can buy it now and you get all the updates for free, kind of like how Minecraft was released. But what I thought I would do now anyway is show in the full version, you have a space plane hanger, so you can take off from the runway and fly into space. Um, you've got a tracking station that lets you track all your orbital vehicles. Now the demo, I believe, only lets you have one vehicle in orbit at a time not totally sure on that. It might let you have two. Um, you've got your launch pad where you can pick a vehicle that you've made and mess with them. Or you've got your vehicle assembly building that you can click on to actually build vehicles. Now what I wanted to do is have a look and see what these other two vehicles are. So I got the Kerbal 1A. We'll load that up and see what that looks like. Hmm, that is a most odd looking vehicle. It's got some big wings um, kind of three axis of symmetry on the wings. It's got some reaction control thrusters. It looks to be a tank of RCS fuel. It's got quite a powerful single looking engine. Um, and then it has a capsule with a parachute on top. So, but I guess I'm not going to actually use this video. I just wanted to quick have a quick look at what they look like. So this is the, the Kerbal 5. It is clearly a much, much, much uh, bigger thing to behold. It looks to have some solid rocket boosters and three pretty large engines. Um, now each one of these things here, are seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. They're all the different stages it goes through. So I don't know how I move the camera up. Maybe it, no. Ah, oh, there you go, mouse. So yeah, that's a that is a pretty big vehicle. Um, and these are all buildable with the demo because you, I mean you look at the demo and you've got a bunch of different parts the real thing has hundreds more parts like just crazy amounts of parts but what I thought I would do is how do we clear everything um, okay that was clearly not the right button um, maybe we need to go uh, new vehicle there we go so we only have one command module it's the command module mark one um, we have squillions of them and cost is no object because this is they haven't incorporated the campaign mode yet um, <clears throat> you can ignore that max temp thing because they haven't implemented re-entry heating yet but that's something they plan on doing so I'm going to click on that and start off with my very very first um, rocket really so what I thought I would do is just run through a bit of a it's kind of the way, similar to the way the US space program went, where they start off small and they kind of show you how it works and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the most simple engine you can get now, which is a solid rocket booster. 
Now, I'm not going to stick that directly onto my ship because uh, that would leave me in a bad way later. What I want to do is go to structural and add in a decoupler. Because by adding in the decoupler, that means I can now jettison the two stages and separate them into two parts. Now, I'm also going to want to have um, some assistance on the way back down. So I can either put the parachute on the top or on the bottom. I want to put it on the top there. And now I will add the solid rocket booster. Now also, it's not a very good idea ever to sit on your engine. So that's where they've added in these different kinds of structural things you can add. So I'm going to go for this. And you can see if I put that on there, it adds one. That's where this button here comes in. I can go for lots of different kind of symmetry modes. Uh, I normally like to go for three with simple things. And so what this does, you can see, it adds three identical struts that basically hold my ship together. So now looking at the staging window over here, we have push spacebar once, and these three here detach, and then it goes straight to here, which is the next stage, and it will fire the, the solid rocket booster. Now because it's a solid rocket booster, it will come on at 100% thrust, and stay on at 100% thrust until it's out of fuel. Then when I press the next spacebar, it will decouple and deploy the parachute. Now, you're probably going to be moving pretty fast at that time, so de deploying the parachute at the same time is a bad idea. So I'm going to press the plus button to add a new stage and set the decoupler there so it will fire the rocket, jettison the next stage, and then when I press spacebar it will deploy the parachute. So that's basically how it's set up. So I'm going to now go to the launch pad. You can see here I have Enley Keeman. Uh, now basically over here we have three stages. It tells you what stage you're up to. It has a control for your roll, a setting for your roll and your, your your sorry and your pitch, so you can show how things are going. Um, the next button brings up a docking mode that allows you to select between uh, linear thrusts and rotational thrusts, and it kind of shows you how you're moving relative to what you set as the target, including up, down, left, right, forward, backward. Um, you also have the orbital map that shows you your planet, which is the planet Kerbin, and just there is the Kerbin, the Kerbal Space Center, and the little area where the ship launches from. And this will be used to like map out your orbits and how you're going with different things like that. But basically, uh, left shift, and the throttle will start to move up. We're going to put it at 100% throttle. Now when I press spacebar, it's going to take off and it's just going to fly up in the air. Don't know what that does. Don't want to push that button. Um, up here you've got your vertical speed gauge, which shows you how fast you're climbing or falling. Um, you've got your atmosphere bar that shows thick atmosphere, uh, moderate, and then thin, and then space. Um, over here you've got your g-force meter. When you're in the green you're good. As it climbs up each one of these tags, so we're at 1g, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. About 9g it starts to go red because that's bad. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, if you ever hit the bump stop, you're pretty much dead. It doesn't implement that yet, but you know you would be. But anyway, here we go, we're going to press spacebar, and we die. Okay, clearly I did some part of my configuration there incorrect, so let's go press escape, go end flight, go back to the vehicle assembly building, and I believe now I need to put that just there. So the rocket fires at the same time as that detaches. Um, let's try again. So, throttle up, press spacebar, there we go. So now you can see we're rocketing up, this is climbing up at an incredible speed. We're currently climbing vertically though, and vertically is bad. So what we're going to do is just tip over just a little bit, just to give ourselves some momentum so we head out over the water. Now, I'm not sure if I can actually pause things. No, it doesn't appear that I can. Um, maybe sp escape pauses. There we go. Uh, while that's paused, um, just give me one second. Hopefully you can see my mouse cursor. Yeah, I'm hoping you can see my mouse cursor at the moment. Um, here you have, this is how much fuel you have left in your rocket. So you can see I've already used about two-thirds of my fuel. Um, and here you can see the overheat meter. Um, this won't matter for most engines, but some engines can actually overheat. So you have to control your throttle to make sure that you don't overheat. Um, down here we have our surface speed, 
which is uh, 356.4 meters per second. Now that's speed relative to the surface of the planet, so that includes kind of up and down, and it's it's not a, a particularly useful measure, but it gives you an idea of how fast you're shooting through the atmosphere. So in this particular case, I'm going very fast. Uh, I'll show you in the next one where I have a throttleable engine how I really want to go. But you can also see here I'm doing one, two, I'm currently sustaining three Gs. So Enley there is probably being squished back into the seat quite forcefully. Now because this is a constant thrust rocket, and the rocket makes up most of the mass of the ship, as the fuel burns down, it gets lighter and lighter. So if you keep watching, this G-force is going to go up and up and up and up and up and up and up. So we'll resume. So you can see the G-force climbing as we're burning our fuel out. You can see the heat's going up, but it's not mattering because we're going to run out of fuel soon. And, whoop, we're out of fuel, so we press spacebar and that detaches us. Now we have our little ship bobbling around. And clearly that's not a good way to do things, so I'm going to try and just get it lined up in the center of... Now that symbol there is your velocity vector, so that's basically where the ship is going. So now we're coming back down. So you can see this dropping off quite quickly. And I'm trying to keep the nose pointed towards the velocity vector because that lowers your drag and means you get a little bit further. And now, there we go, we made it to nearly 14 kilometers and we're on our way back down, just into the moderately thick part of the atmosphere. So we're coming back down. Now this time, because we're on our way down, I actually want to try and aim at the opposite part I want because I want to maximize our drag. So I want to aim at the one with three bits which is the, I guess, 180 degrees out from where you're going because that'll help minimize my speed. So you can see I'm still speeding up but as the atmosphere gets thicker I'll actually start slowing down now because of the drag and you know, doing a re-entry or something you want this heat shielded drag part pointed down. Now the next time I press spacebar it's going to deploy my parachute. So I'm going to do that at about 5 k's or the point where I'm down to around about 150 I think is a good number. It really depends on what comes first. It takes a few seconds for the parachute to deploy and you may as well get all the free braking you can from the bottom of your ship. So about 150, deploy the parachute, now that's going to continue to slow me down and at about 500 meters above sea level it will deploy the parachute proper. So we haven't deployed proper yet, so you can see it's still just like a drogue slowing me down. And the reason it does that is if you deployed it at full speed it would just tear the ship apart or it would destroy the parachute which is equally bad so you can see it kind of deployed there and there was a big spike in g-forces that stopped me and now I drift down very slowly and I'm just gonna just ignore that warning, just gonna speed up time a little bit just to make it come down quicker and then we'll do a nice little splash down Perfect. So now when we end this flight, um, it gives you all your statistics for the flight. So we lift off. <laughs> Separation of stage 2 was confirmed. We endured up to 2 Gs. Although I thought I read it being a bit higher than that. Maybe it counts that as being you know, no Gs and it tells you how many Gs you got above gravity. So that might match up with the 3 that I thought I saw. There you go. We got to 13.8 kilometers high. Achieved some pretty good speed, covered about 14 k's over ground. The ballistic arc was about 33, so yeah, not all in all we did not too bad considering we just used a really, really simple engine setup. So what I'm going to do now to make things a bit more complicated, I'm going to add in um, a second stage to the rocket. So I'm going to add in just a small fuel tank and just a small engine and then I'm going to add in another decoupler so you can see that's added in an extra stage so what we want to do is now we say decouple and we drag that together so as soon as it decouples it will fire that engine and now we want to attach our solid rocket booster to the bottom of that but we don't want those to go together we want those to be in a separate stage like that so now we'll do just like it did last time except we'll have an extra stage there in the middle that will allow us to hopefully get a bit higher because basically the more fuel you carry 
the more effort your engine has to put in to get you to accelerate up. So by accelerating with your first bit of engine then dropping it away, you actually maximize the effectiveness of your acceleration. So um, the last one got us to 13.8. This one is going to get us substantially higher. We're not going to accelerate as quickly, clearly because we're much heavier now, but let's just fire it off and we'll see how we go. See, we're accelerating nowhere near as fast as we were previously. Uh, start to slightly tip us over again, just to make sure we're heading in the east direction. So you can see here a much, much, much slower ascent. Still well up over 200 meters per second though. So, it's burned out, press spacebar. The second stage now fires and gives us that little bit of a kick. And you can see we're actually slowing down now because we're producing so much drag versus the power of this little tiny engine. But it has heaps of fuel. So if we can keep ourselves nearly upright until we get out of the thick part of the atmosphere, we can start to kind of tip ourselves over. About 10 kilometers is normally a pretty good mark to start going, you know, down to 70, down to 50, sorry, down to 70, 60, 50 down to 45 so now they're up to 12 we'll kind of tip ourselves over because to get into orbit we don't want to be going up we want to actually be going around the planet so we build up orbital velocity so that's why at about this point here we start to kind of tip over because we want um, height but we also want speed across but we have to kind of regulate that as well because if you have a really powerful rocket with lots of fuel you'll end up going way 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 too high and you won't get yourself into a stable orbit so this I don't believe you can probably hear me tap tap tapping around the keys at the moment to try and keep things stable so we're up to about 500 now in terms of meters per second so now I'm going to basically flatten it out and just basically shoot at the horizon and this is going to hopefully build up as much speed as I possibly can. But you can see my vertical velocity there is down to just over 10, which is not as good as I thought it actually was. I was misreading my dial, so I'm going to have to keep my altitude up, otherwise I'm going to start dropping. I'm flying all over the place with a heap of wobbles here. Now back up to about 100 meters per second climb. not too bad again not as high as I would like now if I can just pause this for a second I wonder if I can pause it no I wonder if this will work okay so let's go um, there's no easy way to do this without pausing I don't know how to pause other than pressing that button so let's just go back to resuming the flight ideally I want to show you what the map can show you but I'm not in a particularly good spot at the moment to do that but you see we're up to about a thousand meters per second of surface velocity and we need about seven thousand in order to actually uh, achieve orbit so clearly I'm not going to achieve orbit and I'm not even going to achieve thin atmosphere here so I'm going to ditch that part whoops let's put the T for stabilization on just to keep us mainly pointed in the right direction there we go so you can see I'm dropping off but now if I click on the orbit map and bring ourselves around you can see there we have um, the bit of the spaceship that I dropped you can see the next bit of the spaceship that I dropped there's the actual spaceship and there's the ap apoapsis which I'm going to reach in three seconds which is at uh, almost 31 kilometers and from now it shows the ballistic arc of basically how I'm going to come back down so got to about 30 kilometers which is you know not bad so once again I'm going to turn off my stabilization and rip myself around so I'm facing backwards assuming I can manage to get myself there without being super unstable and you can see that I'm already starting to slow back down because I'm going quite fast and I'm facing quite a big draggy end of myself there so I'm just going gonna, just gonna to go to three times time warp so you can see coming in really fast now four times time warp the g-forces are building up as the descent gets steeper but they shouldn't get too high because it's fairly flat 
atmosphere is getting thicker down about 250 so like I said around about 5 k's or around about 150 you want to kind of judge this so that you don't end up just spearing into the ground before your parachute can open and slow you so once again I'm going to go for about 150 I think I'm doing pretty safe Now there are some really, really good tutorials on YouTube about this particular game and about how to get into space and how to do lots of different things, so I'm not intending to make this a complete tutorial. Um, I'm looking at the time and thinking I do still have just enough time to get into orbit. So, there we go, parachute deployed, slide ourselves right down. The last 500 meters really are the slowest. <clears throat> and there we are, touchdown. So now let's end the flight and see how we went. Um, achieved almost 31 kilometers, it was close. Higher speed achieved 1275, higher speed over land 1255. You can see we covered much, much further this time. So now what I'm going to do is go back to the vehicle assembly building. Uh, I'm going to ditch this. What I'm going to do this time is go for a long fuel tank. Move things up just a little. Now this time I'm going to go for absolute overkill. So I'm going to give myself that vectored thrust engine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a... Where is it? A decoupler. And once I've given myself that decoupler, I'm then going to give myself I'm going to give myself plenty of room here. I'm going to give myself the triple stacker. Now, like I said, this is going to be complete overkill. I want three of these. I'm going to give myself three solid rocket boosters. So there we have um, basically that's the decoupling ring, okay, so we're going to fire the three solid rocket boosters so let's grab this I want you to be attached to that, okay, so it's going to disconnect, fire the three solid rocket boosters once they run out of power it's going to disconnect and then fire the main rocket then once it disconnects it's going to fire the next rocket and then we're going to be ready to parachute down. Now I'm not entirely sure how stable this is going to be, so what I'm going to do to help with the stability is I'm going to add um, some control fins to the upper stage. So that should hopefully help to stabilize things a bit and help us to fly a little bit straighter. So like I said, this is going to be complete overkill for what we're looking at doing here, but it's also pretty ugly. That's okay, so let's fire this up. You can see we accelerate quite quickly. We've actually got a bit of roll and a bit of tip, so we're not actually anywhere near as stable as I thought we would be. Whoa! Yes, this has ended up being very, very bad. It seems that um, the stabilization fins that I added are doing the exact opposite of what I was hoping they would do. And now we have ourselves tipping end over end out of control and, and rolling quite badly. Yeah, this is going to be very bad, so let's... Mm. That engine did not throttle down before I disconnected it, so we're in a bad way now. I think our only hope now is to hopefully... Nope. <laughs> we are in a very bad way. Now this is how things can go wrong because because that engine had not run out of fuel before the next stage fired um, it thrust the stages and even though we've decoupled those stages still think we're, we're together. So um, my person at the moment is experiencing a very 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 bad ride and I feel kind of sorry for them and I wish there was something more I could do. But um, there's just not 
and hopefully we're not going to plow onto the ground and kill them. Getting a lot of g-force at the moment, there we go. So, time to deploy the drogue chute. Well, that went very bad, but at least we know they would have survived. So, ooh, lots of things being damaged by lots of other things. So, you winglet friends, useless. Now, let's try again. Aerodynamics, let's go for winglets. We want three symmetry. Let's try. I want to see if... I don't, I don't actually know if I need that. Hoping it'll just sit nicely on the exhausts. I'm going to put these fins on down here. So hopefully that will make things a little bit more stable. Because, I mean, that's really what I wanted to try and avoid, that instability I got. And I did a very bad job of it. So now, I think things will be better. Still got a little bit of a roll happening. But, definitely appears to be more manageable. Of course, I've got no, virtually no virtually no lateral control here, so I'm just kind of stuck in a climb and the fins are stabilizing it, but not well, actually making it more difficult to do what I want to do as opposed to making what I wanted to do easier. Okay, so there we'll fire the next rocket off. Now this rocket has vectored thrusting, so it has uh, lots of really good control. So yeah, that's beautiful, exactly how we wanted things to go. So about 10 kilometer mark now, so I'm just going to tip right over because we're climbing quite quickly. And hopefully I can hold it around about this point here while we accelerate. Um, again, it's not the most stable, so jumping to the orbit mode right now would probably be a little dangerous. I wonder if the SAS will help. No, that's not helping at all either. That's making it worse. So, I mean, the last time we got to about 30,000, 31,000. This time I'm thinking we're going we're gonna to end up doing much better than that. So here's our orbit map. We're currently set to 35 already, so we're definitely heading in the right direction. Just about to run out of this main booster. Staging, firing the small one. Now this is going to keep us accelerating, and we're going to keep accelerating, fingers crossed, uh, in the direction that we want to go. So we've now switched over to orbital velocity instead of surface velocity. Um, that doesn't make a huge difference unless you're going to orbit. Let's click on this now and see how we're doing. So, see this thing here is rapidly rising. Now we want this to rise up to over 100 to be in orbit. We still want to make sure we have lots of vertical speed. In fact, I'm probably pointing a little flat. So how are we doing? Um, oops, got to zoom out. 94. Getting right up there now. Okay, about 110, so I'm going to press X, and that's going to cut my thrust. Now the reason I'm cutting my thrust there is I've basically got enough vertical speed up here to get myself up into the orbit that I want to get myself into. Now once we start to get close to this, what I'm going to do is zoom out, I'm going to click and that adds a maneuver node, and then I'm going to maneuver that way which basically adds thrust. going to be 120 and 103. I want that to be a little bit higher. 105, 107, 108. So we've got 125 and 108. So an almost circular orbit by using this little maneuver tool. Now basically what it says, I have to do a 28 second burn uh, in about 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So what I'm going to do is when, and also, that blue pointer 
is basically pointing where I'm going to need to do the burn. So I'm going to need to do, when it comes to about 14 seconds left, I need to throttle up to full throttle because you want to burn exactly at the point where it tells you to, but you can't do 492 in no time at all. So I'm going to need to wait until that gets a bit closer. So I'm going to speed things up. So I can go 10 times. There we go. Like I said, about 13 or 14 seconds to go. I'm going to start to throttle up. Okay, so here we go, throttling up. You can see my little green bar coming down. And then as we get close, I want to start to throttle back a little bit. So we're now at the node. Six, five, four, three. So there we go, 1.7 meters per second off what I really need to be. And if I wanted, I could chase the blue marker and then give it another little touch to try and get myself a bit closer. So that now I'm 0.7 and you can see it jumped over the other side. But realistically, um, what I'll do is, I think if I click on that now I can delete it. Basically now, you can see that I am in an orbit that is 108 kilometers by 124 kilometers. So I'm in a perfectly stable orbit. And this little ship, with almost half its fuel left, is, where, where's the world? There's the sun, there's the world. It's just gonna keep jumping around, and it's just gonna look, well, flashy. It's not gonna do anything fancy, it's just gonna sit here, and look at that, he is in space. He's looking a little, just looking a little nervous, but I think that's more because he's in zero G for the first time. Um, see, I'm just coasting up here. There is absolutely no atmosphere at all. We are just being a cute little spaceship, doing our thing. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to plan how we're going to get back. So that point, uh, just there, is where we launched from. So what we want to do then is we want to come. Um, to somewhere that's just short of that point. We want to add a maneuver and we want to add a deorbit burn. And you can see now the little dotted line is getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So what we want to do is we want to kind of aim to have it just kind of dip into the atmosphere over the top of it. Now that's a really steep descent. What you would normally do is you would normally aim for a much um, higher point. Something like that. So there's the periapsis at 31 kilometers. That's kind of what you would normally aim for, around about 20 to 30. Because you can see I've burnt now a lot less fuel. So by burning a lot less fuel, I make it easier. Now all I have to do is just rotate this point all the way around until the point that I'm going to be is just past my target. So what that is going to do is going to kind of descend me into the atmosphere and then I'm going to work my way around until I kind of come back at about 30 kilometers over the top here and then taking gravity and drag and things into account, I'll actually end up pretty much landing at that spot. So now I have that maneuver planned and I have it located in the correct spot. I can now come back to my staging and I will work out where the blue marker is. There we go, there's the blue marker. Line my little ship up with it. Oops, wrong button. There we go, so that should just hold me right on that spot. So, um, doesn't tell me what my estimated burn is. Now, I don't know why that is. It should be telling me my estimated burn. Maybe I have to click on it to select it. No, it's still not telling me. But it's 77.1 meters per second, so it's not very much. So I'm going to basically accelerate time until we get closer. About 10 minutes to wait. 
So let's do that a bit faster. You can see that by using the SAS it's basically holding it in the right spot. Okay, three minutes to go. A bit faster again, two, one minute to go. Okay, 30 something seconds to go, speed it up again. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to, back to one time and I'm gonna start the burn. You can see that it's coming down quite quickly and I'm only using a little bit of thrust. So I'm going to back the thrust off and chase the blue marker for just a little bit. Okay, so I'm now 0.1 meters per second off what I was looking for. So that is going to be an, an excellent burn. So what I can do now is delete the maneuver node and it will actually show you the path that I'm going to take. So my periapsis point is uh, 21 kilometers and it's short. So I've potentially done a little bit of an overburn but um, that's not going to be a big deal. I mean, realistically, we're just going to kind of shoot into the atmosphere anyway. And then once we get into the atmosphere, um, things will be sweet. We'll be fine. So let's just speed things up a little again as we come into the atmosphere. So I'm not burning my engine, I have like no control. Either that or I've run out of power. Bad things do happen occasionally. So you can see 90 kilometers. Once I get to about 70, you'll start to see the atmosphere start to thicken back up a little bit. And then I should hopefully get some control. So now the atmosphere is starting to thicken back up, and there you go, I've got control again. So I'm going to point myself in that direction. And now that we're in the atmosphere, the warning about the time speeding comes up, but that's okay. Because none of this stuff is going to be a big deal for me. So you can see we're still accelerating at the moment because we're on our way down. The atmosphere is getting thicker. As the atmosphere starts getting thicker, eventually we will start to slow down because we'll get more drag than gravity. It's kind of quiet when nothing's happening, isn't it? Ah, oh, there we go. So now we're slowing down because we're starting to get into the thicker part of the atmosphere at about 40 kilometers. So we're ripping through. So if we go to our orbit map, you can see now what's happening is this line that's where we really want to land has now come way short and saying we're going to intersect way short over where we had actually planned to be. So um, orbital mechanics fail for me. That's not too bad. So we're at 24 kilometers. What I'm going to do now is start to burn this engine out just to help slow myself down, just really ditch all this really ditch as much of this as I can and then we'll deploy it whoops should have slowed time back down to normal for that no wonder I wasn't having a lot of control and so now because we've killed most of our vertical speed gravity will start to accelerate us again slowly but it should make for a much more comfortable ride so coming down Again, coming down, we're less than five. We want to go down to about 150. Looks like we're going to be landing over land this time. So, you know, I would be sacked from NASA at this point because I landed nowhere near where I was supposed to, and I also managed to land probably on some foreign country in the middle of a desert that we we're at war with. So, at least landed on a bit of a peninsula, but it would be a very difficult job for our Navy who was sitting just off the coast of the Space Center to come and pick me up. So here we go, slowing down again. Beautiful, beautiful sight, the parachute deploying like it's supposed to. Gonna accelerate time down. Coming down. Gonna 
slow time back down to normal just before we get to the landing site just because um, I have heard, I don't know whether it's true or not that sometimes if you hit the ground and you accelerate the time it does some bad things to you so let's end that flight and see how we did um, okay we had liftoff separation of stage 4 confirmed stacked a couple of was damaged by engine exhaust from liquid engine 2 that doesn't really matter that's just because I fired the engines so close together all the parts that were dropped off from the first stage all just got damaged but that's not a problem if you don't want to reuse them and I didn't but if you maybe wanted to parachute them back and use them again which could be something that becomes important when the campaign mode gets implemented uh, that would be a bad thing to do but let's have a look at what we did highest altitude achieved 124 kilometers um, we achieved some good speed we covered 4.9 million meters or 4,000 kilometers 4.2 G's um, we achieved orbit clearly so I mean I think that went about as well as it could like I said what we had was absolutely overkill which is why I had all that energy left to burn at the end um, realistically you could just have a couple of reaction control thrusters to just kind of tip you into the atmosphere and then you'd be fine but like I said that was an overkill ship for what we were doing um, so I hope you've enjoyed this I guess quick look at the game and this look at really kind of how things work a little bit and just a, I guess the basics of orbital mechanics um, like I said I plan on buying this and playing this because I think this is going to be an awesome game and the full version has a huge amount to offer including mod support and lots of good things um, I guess you know if you'd like to see me play this in the future let me know but otherwise this is just going to be a bit of a one-off just to show you the game and to show you that the demo is very full featured in fact um, this is an accurate reflection in the demo you can fly to the moon and you can land a lander on the moon and then bring it all the way back to earth or Kerbal and then do a nice comfortable splash down in the ocean so all of that can be done in the demo with the parts that are available uh, the full version adds a whole solar system that you can travel to uh, nuclear rockets, space planes, heaps of other stuff in the full version which is why I intend to get it um, but really I suggest you check the demo out if this looks even remotely interesting to you and let me know what you think so thanks very much for watching A Stocky out